As promised, I've got a bunch of standards and uh, a bunch of coffee. Let's see who's, uh, who's on board. Da, 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 da. Uh, I should, uh, I should actually say, I don't, uh, I don't actually have any coffee because I've had my two cups of coffee. And so now I'm, uh, I'm drinking, uh, oat milk with chicory and a little bit of maple syrup in it because if I have a third cup of coffee, I won't be able to play. Thank you everyone for showing up. Hmm. As promised. Here we go. Here's a, a tune by du Duke Ellington from 19... I just looked it up before the thing. 1940... 44, 47, somewhere in the 40s. I never cared much for moonlit skies I never went back at five flies Now that the stars in your eyes I'm beginning to see the light I never went in for afterglow A candlelight on the mistletoe Now that you turn the lamp down low I'm beginning to see the light you know, I used to ramble through the park I was shadow boxing in the dark And then you came and caused a spark And that's a four-alarm fire now I never made love by lantern sign Never saw rainbows in my wine Now that your lips are burning mine I'm beginning to see the light Shadow boxing in the dark, and then you came, and then you caused it. It's a spark, and is a vol And I never made love by lantern shine. I never saw rainbows in my wine. Now your lips burning mine. I'm beginning to see the light. Now that your lips they are burning. I'm beginning, I'm beginning to see the light. All right, that was Duke Ellington. Uh, I forget who wrote the lyric to that. Maybe Johnny Mercer. Um, you know, you are all on the internet out there, so. Uh, feel free in the chat to just add, uh, to look it up, figure it out, figure out who wrote the tune, and we can all add a few more pebbles to our aquarium of knowledge. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. My name is Peter Mulvey, for those of you who might have just stumbled upon this. And uh, I'll just be um, singing uh, jazz standards for about the next hour or so uh, while drinking coffee, hoping you're all doing the same. Uh, if you would all do me a favor and um, just uh, hit share. If you're watching on Facebook, hit share and say, uh, hey, this nerd is uh, nerding out about jazz standards and nerding out about coffee. That would be great. Thank you. I'm fond of that, I'm fond of that tune. 
Um, so yeah, and if you're watching on YouTube, maybe share it on your your Twitter or whatever. But you know, try to draw people in here. Um, <laughs> I share fun facts once in a while. For instance, fun fact: Facebook is evil, and when we're done here, we should all unplug and go for a walk. Um, uh, thank you all for the support. Uh, you know, this is how we musicians are getting through until we can uh, return to touring. And it's been a little bit frightening watching, uh, you know, here at the beginning, uh, here at the beginning of our recovery from the, uh, uh, from the epidemic where we're just beginning to vaccinate. It's a little appalling watching people decide that they're just going to go lie, uh, go out and um, uh, they're just going to go out and uh, and f flock at, uh, to public places as though uh, we've, you know, we've put a few shots in a few million arms and that's enough. So I, I just want to thank you all f for participating in uh, uh, continuing. Just hopefully we can round this corner and save a few more people. So, right, uh, that's the heavy stuff. Here's the light stuff. So I've had a 20, 25 year love affair with the American Songbook. And um, it started for me, I, I've, I wanted to play this tune early in the set. So this is a tune that I learned from David Goodrich uh, in the Music Emporium, Goody, who produced all my middle records and wrote a whole bunch of tunes with me. Uh, <laughs> Um, we were in a guitar shop where we both worked when we were very young men and, uh, and, um, you know, he was teaching me this old standard by Irving Mills called Moon Glow. And he, he did something really deft, which is that he showed me something very simple about it. So it, it you know, the chords to the tune are, um, it had to be Moon Glow. Way up in the blue, it had to be in moon glow that led me straight to you. And he showed me this amazing thing, which is that there's this through line within the harmony of those chords, and it goes. I just was so captivated by that. Like, wait a minute, that's why it all, that's why it's so good. And you have like, so anyway, uh, that was it. Like, at the time, I was much more of a folk, you know, folk-centered, one, four, five, a little bit of rock and roll. And, I, like, what I had not yet encountered was how sophisticated a simple idea can be. And that's it. I was off and running. I was going to learn these tunes. Uh, so, this is... Um, oh, I'm using standard tuning a step down. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Appreciate it. Thank you. So let me just play you Moon Glow. Uh, somebody look up. I know it's Irving Mills and a, a bunch of other people wrote this tune. I feel like it. This tune is from like 1930 something. So. It had to be Moon Glow. Way up in the blue It had to be moon glow That led me straight to you I still hear you saying Dear one, hold me fast And I start in praying Let this last. We, we seem to flow right through the air. Heavenly song seem to come from everywhere. And now when this moon glow, we're up in the blue. I always 
remember that glow gave me Jazz is funny. Jazz is like jazz music is about as close as I come to dancing. I'm not much of a dancer, and um, you're either sort of relaxed and having fun, or you're not. And it, there's no magical secret to it. I mean, I'm much more prone to relax and have fun while playing jazz than I am while dancing. Um, Thank you. Someone asked if I ever considered doing an album of these tunes. You know, I did, but as you, uh, those of you who are familiar with me, no doubt know, I'm a, a somewhat discursive thinker. And so I was like, yeah, I'll do a record of jazz standards. And by the time it actually came out, it was called The Good Stuff. And it, uh, it opened with a, a Melvern Taylor tune and it had a Leonard Cohen tune on it. And it had like really sort of taken the, the concept of jazz standard, just mangled it, you know, far and wide. Um, although there is an EP, you can buy the EP as well, which is more sort of like jazz standards. You know, uh, I feel like we did I'm Confessing That I Love You on that. And I don't even remember, um, but also, uh, on my covers record, uh, Live in the Subway, here's a tune that I did. This is called Comes Love. And this, is, this was uh, done in the form of taking a jazz standard sort of out of its uh, straight ahead kind of Tin Pan Alley 1930s, 1940s feel. And so. Um... <laughs> You put your rubbers on your feet Comes a snowstorm You can get a little heat Comes love Nothing can be done Comes a fire Fire Come and rescue you You blow a tire You can get another shoe Comes love Nothing can be done Try hiding, hiding isn't any use. You just start sliding when your heart turns on the juice. Comes a heat wave, you can hurry to the shore. Comes a summons, hide behind the door. Comes love, nothing can be done.
when day comes a toothache See your dentist right away Comes low There is nothing can be done Comes the measles You can quarantine the room Comes a mousy Sweep it with a broom Comes love Nothing can be done That's all Brother Brother, if you've ever been in love That's all Brother Brother, you know what I am speaking of Comes a You can always stay awake Comes depression You can get another break Comes love Nothing can be done Comes love Nothing can be done <laughs> All righty then That was Comes Love uh, tune, I believe, from the 30s, and uh, I took it and put it in sort of more of a... I mean, I guess the feel that I'm stealing there is the way young lovers do. Uh, uh, Van Morrison. Um, and then, uh, I, you know, when you choose your set lists, uh, when you're doing the, the repertoire, God, it's suddenly, like, I got to the solo break, and I was like, oh, crap, I usually have Goody. <laughs> or somebody, some shredder. Take a solo, and uh, that one's fast. Here, here's a tune that here's a tune that illustrates um, something I've loved about jazz standards, and I've tried to work it into my own writing. I feel like there are not a lot of writers that do this super well in the modern era. Maybe the best one is Paul Simon, um, and that is having a light touch, but managing to say things that are actually fairly profound. Uh, sometimes, you know, super sad. Um, so this is, I mean, this is just Paper Moon, you know, that little tune. But for all that, it's sort of a, a, a slight song. Um, check out the depth of that lyric. So, say it's only a paper moon Hanging over a cardboard sea but it wouldn't be make-believe if you believed in me. Oh, it is only a canvas sky thrown over a muslin tree. But it wouldn't be make-believe if you believed in me. It's a honky-tonk parade Without your love It is a melody played in a penny arcade It's a Barnum and Bailey world It's just as phony as it can be But it wouldn't be make-believe If you believed in me honky-tonk parade without your love it's a melody played in a penny arcade it's a barnum and a baby world it's all as phony as it can be but it wouldn't be make-believe not if you believed in me oh it wouldn't no, it wouldn't, not if you believed in me. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my God. I see someone, someone was saying that they were commenting they liked the guitar. So this guitar was built in 1939. I, and I think about that a lot. Like, there was, there was not a lot of rock and roll in the world in 1939, which is to say none. Like, you know, Big Mama Thornton and, was alive and uh, Sister Rosetta Tharp was alive. The people who would go on to make rock and roll, you know, they were children. But, the, you know, rock and roll was actually not a thing. And this guitar is sort of uh, concurrent with all of that, uh, the repertoire that I'm playing today. Almost all that stuff happens. Also, someone uh, from back in the day told, said, I'm still playing the hell out of the Larive OM10 you sold me at the Music Emporium in 1994. That's awesome. When I worked in a guitar shop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Right, well, this stuff has seeped its way into my own writing. Uh, so here's, a, here's a, a tune that's on one of my records. By the way, if you, if you want to support me, uh, I appreciate that. You know, I, I, I can't believe that I've made it this far into the pandemic with uh, half of my career just taken away. Like, I haven't toured in a, in a year. And... Um, it's been rough, but I, I thank you for the support for these live streams like this. Uh, also, you, you know, I've got the on the front page of PeterMulvey.com. You can go to my, and join the Patreon for as little as three bucks a month, three, five, ten, whatever you feel like you can give. And there's a weekly song that you'll get for that. Um, it's uh, a weekly song, uh, the occasional lesson, uh, a series called Poetry Hour with Mabel Dog, where I read poems to a dog who doesn't care much about poetry. Anything you can do, I appreciate it. And um, the other thing, of course, you can do for us artists is buy our records. So um, this came from a... Uh, this is a song that I wrote, and I wrote it in the form of a jazz standard, and it appeared on a record I put out in 2009 called um, Letters from a Flying Machine. And the song is called Some People. <laughs> Some people go to the synagogue, some people go to the woods, some people go to a shrink and they think everybody should. Some people go crazy in plain sight since the streets of the neighborhood and I go mm, 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 mm. Some people go to Washington, some people go to the moon, some people go to a timeshare from the shores of a secret lagoon. Some people go to the tavern. Some people go out way too soon. Some people go, mm, 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 mm. Some people go for a nice sandwich. Some people go for a song. Some people couldn't go on forever and some are they gone all too long. Some people go and they put their heads in cryogenic stasis. Some people go too long without getting laid on a regular basis. Some people go Allah U Akbar. Some people go Namaste. Some people go peace be with you. Some people go way hey hey. Some people go I know exactly what God is thinking, no matter what you say. And I go mm 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 mm. tavern and some people go to the church and some senators go into airport johns and they get their reputations besmirched and some people go from the altar and they leave someone in the lurch i go mm, 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 mm. And some people go by bicycle and some people go by truck and some people go for the ladies some people go for lady luck some people go har 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 some people go nyuk 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 i go mm, mm, Some people go from home to work, to home they watch some TV, they brush their teeth, mm, call that a day. Some people wish they could have that life, some people have that life. Some 
people they go lightly some people go heavy as hell some people go all this could be better some people go this is all just as well some people go to the mountains and they get their souls rung like a bell i go mm -mm -mm. Some people go, I will be well, and I will be well, and all manner of things will be well. I go, thank you. I remember when I was writing that, and I got to the. Uh, uh, some people go by bicycle. Some people go by truck. Some people go for the ladies. Some people go for lady luck. You know the rhyme that's clearly <laughs> that we're on a collision course with you know, never gets said. And, uh, uh, I, you know, my favorite of all of the jazz writers for that, I feel like, I, let me just do a song of his now, but I've always, I mean, I've always loved Cole Porter, obviously, he's, he's amazing. But I was thinking one day about his tune, um, Let's Do It, Let's Fall in, in Love. And like, the joke, of the tune is that it's really biological it's about that tunes about sex that tune is about sex you know birds do it bees do it even educated fleas do it and it and it gets you know um electric eels do it though it shocks them i know like uh so the whole song is sort of flirting with the buttoned up culture and all the people listening to the song were like, ha, 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 I get the joke. He's, he's talking about sex without coming out and saying it. But of course, Cole Porter was a gay man in an era when it's tough, much tougher to be a gay man than it is now. And I always thought that on some level, Cole Porter was looking back at us, you know, looking back at we, the public, going, ha, 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 we get your joke and going, ha, 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 yeah, I'm sure you do. I'll be seeing you. Wait a minute. I'm singing the wrong song. <laughs> That's what I get for making light of Cole Porter. Every time we say goodbye, I die a little. Every time we say goodbye, I wonder why a little. Why the God's above me Who must be in the know Think so little of me They allow you To go When you're near there is such an air of spring about it. I can hear, I can hear a lark somewhere begin to sing about it. There's no love song of finer. Yet I strains the change from major to minor. Every time we say There's no love song of finer Yet I stains the change From major 
future to mine Every time we see <laughs> oh my god that's such a great song all of us here in the uh what leonard cohen called the tower of song you know all of us trying to just make a little sense out of a melody line and a few words you know we know who the we know who the greats are and and we revere them i think of that but as strange the change from major to minor like while he's saying how strange the change from major to minor the chords go from major to minor and leonard cohen well it goes like this the fourth the fifth the minor fall and the major left like come on dude have some mercy yes yes it does here's a tune i, I wasn't sure i was going to play this um I owe this tune to Goody because I had dipped my toe in the water of writing sort of um, in the style of a jazz standard, and he, he meted out a challenge. Um, those of you who are part of my Tuesday song group, Goody was sort of my, uh, my guy giving me prompts way back when I was a young songwriter. Uh, and he was like, well, why don't you write one of those verses out front? Um, and I, I didn't quite know what he meant. And he said, listen, when we, when we all enjoy these jazz standards here in the late 20th, early 21st century, we're actually only enjoying the part of the song that was sort of called the chorus. But a lot of these songs have a whole part beforehand that was sort of part of the stage musical. So, you know, like, just think of what you're losing by stubbornly refusing to dance with me, something, something, something. France with me, something, get in someone's pants with me, and yet you something, something, and you, and you shake your head lovingly. I won't dance, don't ask me, I won't, and on and on, like all of these tunes that we, that we know, they're actually the second half of the tune. And so uh, I wrote this, this is called You and Me and the 10,000 Things, and I, and I put the, you know, I put the, at the end of it, or at the beginning of it, I put that sort of like setup. And it always has to an, end on a chord that's like. And now we're going to begin the tune. So, as the yahoos take a hammer to the great society, while all alarms are drowned out by the chatter of TV, there's one question, and I'm burning to ask it. Where's this headed and why the handbasket? As my faith is failing, my mind is flailing, and my kite goes sailing from view. Here's a little something that I hold on to. Marcus Aurelius and old Lao Tzu they set sail in a sieve on the ocean blue and all that they had in their minds was you and me and the ten thousand things i'm standing in line at the avatar shop and the world is a wheel and i can't make it stop oh but nothing is new especially not you and me and the 10,000 things Think of what we used to know and we Everything once was precious Now everything is cheap And nobody has any time since the future strolled into town single year the price of memory goes down 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 now the pendulum swings like a wrecking ball and iron clouds gloom over the garden wall 
But somewhere the skies are still blue For you and me and the 10,000 things Devil in the details, devil has been putting out my eyes. These days it seems like both truth and fiction are alive. So why is it exactly that I need all of this to ring true? And who is it exactly? Who is it exactly I have been telling the whole story to? Samuel Beckett and old Edvard Munch They sat down one afternoon to martinis and Loch And they laughed and they laughed and they laughed About you and me and the 10,000 things <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, I confess this to uh, uh, one of the feedback Zooms that I was doing for the songwriting group on my Patreon yesterday. We were talking about rhyme, and I'm, uh, I'm kind of anti-vowel rhyme. I mean, it's a perfectly legit thing, but I, I've got a phobia about it. And I'm, um, you know, I'm a fan of consonant rhyme. I like slant rhyme. I like true rhyme. And I said, the one thing you got to watch out for, the one thing you got to watch out for is just being wrong. And I was like, you know, I heard this guy and he was singing a song and he had the word blade. And I didn't know what he was going to rhyme it with. And he rhymed it with Marquis de Sade. And I was, you know, on the inside, I was like, I'm out of here. I am not sticking around in this fucking song. Nope. Marquis de Sade, it was the Marquis de Sade. Wrong. And of all the people to have the comeuppance that I did in that tune that I just wrote, I'm referencing Edvard Munch, who wrote, uh, who painted that painting, The Scream, that painting, Edvard Munch is his name, but it's spelled Munch. And on the record, if you, uh, it's on the uh, Knuckleball Sweet record, I think I pronounced it Munch, which is wrong, and rhymed it with lunch. So I got hoisted on my own petard. Um, <laughs> Whoo! Um, here's a tune. So this was written in 1930, again by Duke Ellington uh, and Barney Begard, who was the clarinetist in uh, in his band, one of the few white members of the band. And Barney Begard has one of the most jazz names in all of history because Barney is short for Albany, but it's got a line in it. Uh, well, you'll see. You ain't been blue. No, no, no. You ain't been blue. Not until you have had that mood in the go. That feeling goes stealing down to my shoes While I, I sit and sigh Go long blues Always get that mood in the gold since my baby said goodbye mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the evening when the lights are low, I 
I'm so lonesome I could cry Cause there's nobody cares about me But I'm just a fool who's blue than broken be When I get that mood in the go I could lay me down and die Always get that mood in the go Since my baby said goodbye mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in the evening, in the evening when the lights are low I'm so lonesome I could cry Because there's nobody cares about me Cause I'm just a fool Who is blue than blue than blue than blue can be When I get that mood in the go I could lay me down and die Thank you very much, Mood Indigo, uh, Albany Bigard, and uh, Duke Ellington, and Johnny Hodges, I think, the lyrics. I don't even know. Again, you're all on the internet with keyboards in front of you. You can look it up. Um, oh, we got Ireland in the house. That's right. I'm playing your national music, jazz. Um, just in from planting kohlrabi and a Donegal cabbage. <laughs> oh, fantastics. Oh, that's great. The line, the line in question, um, the line in question was, I'm so lonesome I could cry. That line showed up in Mood Indigo in 1930. And then, uh, it, and then that set me to wondering, wait a minute, what about, you know, the song by Hank Williams, I'm so lonesome I could cry. I think it was 1949, so 20 damn years later. In other words, who was stealing from who? It's an old question in America now, isn't it? Um, <laughs> on the Patreon, we had an assignment. Um, this week's assignment was that there had to be uh, um, food in our song. That was the deal. You had to have food in the song. And uh, uh, this is a sort of a little known song uh, by, um, oh my God. Um, it suddenly escapes me who, who this was. He was like a, the very, one of the early sort of on the cusp between pop, pop jazz sort of stuff and rock and roll. Holy smoke. All right. I, I hate to say this, but I'm going to Google it. Uh, I'm such a hungry man by not Bobby Troop. Come on. Louis Jordan. How could I have forgotten that name? Because I'm getting old. So. Eat Your Hearts Out, songwriting group. This person put a lot of food in this song. I know a fella from Albuquerque who excels at cooking turkey. So when I want turkey, I go to Albuquerque. Cause I'm such a hungry man And I know a guy In East St. Louis He makes the most delicious Chop suey So when I want chop suey I go to East St. Louis Because I'm such a hungry man 
Shish kebab is one of my favorite snacks. Nothing beats a piece of pizza out in Laguna. They got great tuna. Fish, speaking of which, in old Pawtucket. They'll serve you steam clams in a bucket. So for steam clams in a bucket, I go to Old Pawtucket because I'm such a hungry man. I take a train to downtown Philly so I can eat scrapple until I'm silly. I also eat a lot of the pepper pot they got because I'm such a hungry man. Oh, I could fly on up to the main coast for boiled lobster on plain toast to keep from being melancholy. Sometimes I munch on a New Mexico tamale because I'm such a hungry man. Duncan Hines, he ain't got nothing on me. I've been known to drive alone to Butte, Montana to get a banana split. There's a girl in Tucumcari and she's the girl that I aim to marry. Everybody says that she's good looking, but for me, when she started cooking, that's where love began. Because I'm such a hungry man. Oh God, Tom Waits uh, said you should al you should always have food in your song or like a bench or a town that sounds like it's a good place to be because if people don't like your song, at least they can eat the food that's in the song or they can sit down on the bench or they can just hang out in the town until the next song, you know? And that song is replete. My favorite, I think, in the whole thing is Butte, Montana. Like, where is the banana split? <laughs> Louis Jordan, how could I forget his name? There ain't nobody here but us chickens. Um, here, I want to leave you uh, with a couple of Hoagie Carmichael tunes. Um, oh, but I should also say, um, uh, so I'm going to be doing a, a live stream two weeks from today, and it's going to be Peter Mulvey's most and least requested songs. Um, so if you go to the front page of PeterMulvey.com, there's actually a little Google form and you can put in your three requests. And uh, what I'm going to do <laughs> is take the top 15, like the, so the songs that get the top 15 amount of requests, and I'm going to put those songs in one hat. And then there's going to be a bunch of songs, because I have a lot of songs, there's going to be a bunch of songs that only get one request. So I'm going to take 15 of those and put them in the least requested hat. And then I'm just going to alternate. So you're going to get, uh, you know, the most and least requested songs. Um, because it occurred to me that when I do that, like when I do the most requested songs, it, you know, it's kind of, it's fairly obvious what, what are the popular songs. And then there are a lot of people who feel very passionately about fairly obscure songs that I've written on albums across the 20, 30 years I've been doing this. So I wanted to give that a public airing. So anyway, um, I feel like this is one of the perfect love songs. And uh, the way that I would, uh, I just want to point out like how good this song is by comparing it to a song that was a hit, like songs, uh, a lot of love songs are designed to pitch woo, you know, to, to like, just to tell the beloved, I'm into you, you know? And um, this tune, it's called The Nearness of You. And uh, I'm pretty sure the lyric is Johnny Mercer. Um, and what I love is it begins with a cliche, you know, the moon is a cliche in songs. And, uh, and it turns it around on its head beautifully. The first line is, it's not the pale moon. 
that excites me, that, that thrills and delights me. Oh no, it's just the nearness of you. That's so badass. Like the moon, no, 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 no. And it's not even you, it's just, just the nearness of you. And then uh, if, you, if, you, uh, if you look at a modern uh, love song like Breakfast at Tiffany's, which I think is by the Rembrandt, look at the chorus of that tune and think about it in terms of, you know, trying to pitch woo to the beloved. So I said, what about Breakfast at Tiffany's? And she said, I think I remember the film. And I said, as I recall, we both kind of liked it. So I said, at least that's one thing we've got. Dude, that's your play. That's it. Like, there's a lot on the line here, and that's what you came up with. We both kind of liked it. Sit back. Let, 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 let the lyricists of the 30s and 40s. It's not the pale moon that excites me. The thrills or delights me. It's just the nearness of you. It isn't your sweet conversation that brings me this sensation. Oh no. It's just the nearness of you. soft light I need no soft light to enchant me not if you not if you will only grant me the right to hold you ever so tight and to feel and to feel and to feel in the
thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you, Kevin King. I knew, I knew, I knew we could count on you. Breakfast at Tiffany's is by Deep Blue Something. And I still ha feel like Johnny Mercer got a, got a, just had a better chance with his, the, with his love than did whoever wrote the lyric for Breakfast at Tiffany's. Hey, um, I actually want to do two more because I forgot this one I wanted to do, which is... Um, dream a little dream of me, because one of the things I love about this music is that you keep learning from it. Like, this uh, music has this crazy middle section, the turn... I mean, it's not that crazy actually once again we go back to how deeply sophisticated simple ideas can be the middle the, the middle you know the middle eight of this tune is in a different key it just modulates into a different key but I noticed today that there's a specific gravity so the whole key is I'm playing it in the key of G and then That would be E flat. Yeah, that would be the key of E flat. And what is in common is that they use the uh, the the um, the D minor, which is the four minor of the first key, but it's also the relative minor of the new key that we're in. Like just little little stuff like that. That's why that's so pleasing. And I've been playing this tune for 15 years, and I went, oh duh, that's why they did that. So. Stars shining bright above you Night breezes seem to whisper I love you Birds singing in the sycamore tree Dream a little dream of me Say nighty night and kiss me just hold me tight and tell me you will miss me When I'm alone and blue as can be Dream a little dream of me Stars fading but I linger on dear Just craving your kiss I'm longing to linger till dawn dear just saying this Sweet dreams until sunbeams find you Sweet dreams that leave all worries behind you But in your dreams, whatever they be Dream a little dream of me Craving your kiss I'm longing to linger till dawn, dear Just saying this Sweet dreams until sunbeams find you Sweet dreams that leave all worries behind you But in your dream, whatever they be Dream a little dream of me Oh, but in your dream, whatever they be You got to make me a promise Promise to me You'll dream Dream a little dream of me <laughs> All right, thank you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I love these old tunes, and uh, I've made a study of them, and they're they're simpler. They're simpler than than I think we often take them to be. And I, I there's a thing like just go get a book of chord charts, but also simplify chords down. You know that's been my approach. I mean, I'm just a colloquial guitar player by and large. I'm not. A, I don't have a ton of chops. 
And I honestly don't have a ton of uh, education or, you know, harmonic rubric or, or vocabulary for that matter. But, you know, I can, I can look at a chord and ask what it's made of, you know, root third and fifth, and then is there a seventh? Those things are not hard. You know, we all mastered a language with 26 letters. And music really just has the 12, you know, our, our musics. Um, that's it. And then you build stuff out of those 12 things. Anyway, this is, this is my very favorite song in the whole world. This is all by Hoagy Carmichael. And I know for a fact that the lyric is by Johnny Mercer. He wrote this um, about falling in love. This is called Skylark. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the support. If you feel like supporting me on PayPal or Venmo, that's fine. Or if you just want to sign up for like a regular three bucks a month at my Patreon or five bucks a month at my Patreon or for that matter, 25 bucks a month at my Patreon, all of that just helps keep me afloat. Um, uh, also, yes, two weeks from today, I'm doing uh, my most and least requested songs. There is a form that you can fill out on the front page of my website. And um, as well, I just, I did a Facebook post about this, but I'll be doing an emailing about it. I don't believe that it's going to be safe to tour just yet. And I feel like our country is running headlong into the mistake of saying, oh, we've got a few people vaccinated, let's just open up. And uh, I, I, I just don't wanna get my fellow people killed. And so I'm holding back, but I am booking some in the summer solely for outdoor, social distanced, small shows in people's backyards. I feel like that is a way to edge back into the waters and obviously it's all provisional. If we go into another huge surge, we're gonna to have to cancel those backyard shows because we're so close. But anyway, uh, we're at least starting to line them up. Thank you very much. And uh, this is Skylark by Hoagie Carmichael with a lyric by Johnny Mercer about his falling head over heels in love with Judy Garland. Skylark Have you anything to say to me? You tell, tell me where my love could be. Is there a meadow in the mist where someone's waiting to be kissed? Have you seen a valley green with spring? One where my heart could go a journeying. Over oh, these shadows and this rain to a blossom covered. Lonely flight. Haven't you heard the music in the night? It's wonderful music, faint as a will of the wisp, crazy as a As a gypsy serenading the moon, oh, Skylark. I don't know if you can find these things, but 
But my heart is riding on your wings And so if you see them anywhere Won't you lead me there Won't you lead me Well, thank you so much. Uh, that was about as far as the music would let me into it today. And I appreciate your listening. Hold on to, you know, hold on to the things that you care about. Hold on to your hope, and I will see you soon enough. You take care. I'll see you in two weeks here doing my most and least requested songs. I'm going to... I'm going to leave this up so you guys, if you feel like it, can chat in the uh, chat room. I'll leave this up for a little bit longer, but uh, thank you all, and uh, 